Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. My name is Farhan. I am a second year medical student and today we are going to be talking about clinical experience, okay? And how do you get clinical experience as an undergrad? Now before we do, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button down below. Hey subscribe button, how you doing? And uh, click it and make sure you guys also click the little bell on the side so you guys can get regular updates on every time we post a new video. Remember, we post new videos Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. That being said, let's talk about clinical experience. Do you guys need clinical experience for medical school? I did a video about that already up there. Uh, go check it out and the answer is yes. Now, how do you get clinical experience for medical school? That's the question that I know a lot of people have in the back of their mind, especially when they're starting their pre-med years, especially when they're starting college, especially when they're in high school or even when they are in college and they wanna start doing some extracurricular activities. I understand that's a very, very stressful time for you guys, so I wanna make it a little bit easier for you guys and help you guys out. So let's talk about that. How do you get clinical experience? In my opinion, getting clinical experience is kind of like applying for a job where you have no experience, okay? And uh, it's kind of, you know, a daunting task. I understand that I was there with you, you know, where you guys are, and I've been through it. And I'm telling you, it's doable. It may be hard, and it may be very competitive, but it's definitely doable. So the first thing you definitely wanna do when it comes to applying for clinical experience is making sure that you are looking around you and at the area that's around you for types of clinical experiences that you can work at. So for example, if you are living in a big city, I'm very, very confident that there's gonna be a big hospital that has a program for undergrads who can come through and volunteer. But if you're living at a, you know, a smaller school or if you're in a more rural area, then you can definitely go to a local nursing home because both nursing homes and a hospital provide the same value to a medical school and to a pre-med student. I guarantee you guys that. Make sure you do uh, look around the surrounding area and get an idea of what types of options are available for you guys when it comes to clinical experience. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, once you have done your research, you want to narrow it down. And once that's done, you want to do the second thing. And that is do research on that type of clinical experience. So, so first, look for you know clinical experiences. Number two, get to know the clinical experience you're about to apply for or that you're going to ask to work at, to you know volunteer at, whatever it may be. Do some deep research, okay? And what I mean by deep research is go through their website. Go through the people who work there. Contact people who you may know who have been there, who have worked there, or who are currently working there, okay? Get to know the program as best as you can because you wanna show that program you are, a, you are a good fit for that program. They should be wanting you, okay? Not the other way around. You don't wanna go there, they should want you. And that's what you gotta show them. You wanna show them you know the program you understand the program and you definitely want to be there. Now, once you have done that, once you've done your background research, once you have done your uh, you know, research in general of what's around you, the third thing you want to do is contact that program. And when I say contact that program, I mean hit up someone who's responsible for taking in volunteers, for interviewing you know, pre-meds, for doing stuff like that contact that person, find out who that person is and hit them up, send them an email, pick up the phone. I know it's the 21st century. Pick up the phone, dial the number and ask them for a meeting, a face to face meeting. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure you get to talk to them face to face and that way they can get to know you as a person. Okay. That is very important. I think this is probably the most important part, especially if you guys are at a very uh, competitive school or a very heavily pre-med, you know, uh, a school that has a very heavy or a large pre-med population. It's very competitive sometimes to get a very meaningful clinical experience because everyone's trying to get it, right? And if that's the case, you want to show those programs that you are very passionate, if so more than the person behind you or in front of you. You want to show those programs, you know what, this kid really knows our program and he actually really wants to come here. Maybe we should take him. And the way you do that is you do your research, but then you go in and you talk to them in person. Sometimes that may not be possible just because of the sheer size of the program. 
um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But if you can, go and talk to the, the person in charge and get to know them a little bit. And the, what you want to do when you get there is, number one, make sure you guys dress professional. I know you're an undergrad and you may not have those, but you know what? Screw it. Go and pay some money and get that like wardrobe set ready to go because you're going to definitely need it down the road. Now, when you go all suited and booted without the full suit, but like booted, you know, like you're like, hey, what up, man? I'm like straight up looking like a thug. Uh, but not like a real thug. You want to look like you're a very smart thug, but you're balling on a budget. So, you know, keep it real. Um, once you guys are look professional and presentable, go in, talk to them. And what you want to do is kind of show them that you are very interested. And the way I would do that as an undergrad would be like, hey, you know, I really like your program. I think it's very interesting and I definitely want to be a part of it. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about the program? Yes, I may already know about the program. I may already know every single detail that's available out there, but I definitely want to ask them just to let them talk, just to kind of pitch it to you. Now, once they do that, at the end of the whole conversation, if you have any questions about the program in general, go ahead and do so, but ask some very specific questions. And when I say specific questions, I mean, when you are doing your research, you want to go through the program and kind of find some some points of weaknesses that you may see maybe they may want to increase the amount of volunteers but they just haven't had the chance so you want to ask them hey so i see that you know you guys definitely want to increase your volunteer base um is there anything you know like that i can help you out with or you want to ask them is there anything you're planning to do kind of show them that you have done more than just the basic research in fact you've thought about their program and you've actually thought about how you can contribute to the program and that's the third or fourth thing i've lost track at this point but whatever that's the one of the most important things when you are talking to that person when you are sitting across the, the, the table from that person, you want to show them that not only do you want to come here, you actually want to contribute to their program and make it better. That way, it's a symbiotic relationship. You're not just taking something from them, you're also giving them something, and that gives them more of a reason to take you as an applicant. Okay. That being said, you want to leave on a very good note. Tell them, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time you spent with me. And I am very, very, you know, interested in your program. And I'm going to be sending in my application very soon. Once you do all this, when they see your application, they're going to remember you. Maybe they won't remember your face. Maybe they won't remember your name, but they'll definitely remember you. Okay. And you want to send the application to that person or, you know, whoever it's supposed to go to CC the person you also talk to and follow up. I forgot to say this when you are done, follow up send a follow up email to the person you just met just thanking them for their time and spending you know that time with you and uh, answering your questions it's it's common courtesy but it goes a long way to show that you are very grateful and thankful for the time they spent on you now once you have done all of that when you are ready to send in your application make sure you follow up after you send it in whether it's a week or a day or two days just follow up make sure that you guys you know ask them hey i sent him application i just wanted to confirm you guys got it when can i hear back etc etc okay if you do all that all of this and when the time comes for a clinical you know program to evaluate you to look at you as an applicant i guarantee you i guarantee you guys that you will be remembered better than the person next to you behind you in front of you who really didn't go out of their way to meet with these people they will remember you, they will remember you are very interested in the program and that you want to come and join the program. Now, if you are at a place where maybe you can't schedule a meeting with a person in charge simply because it's so demanding for that person and there's a lot of demand for that program, what I recommend is if there's an information session, make sure you go down and talk to as many people, introduce yourself always and tell them, hey, I'm really interested. Can I just send you some emails? Can we talk over the email? I, don't, I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to take your time right now. Is that possible? It kind of does the same thing. Yes, it's not the same as a face-to-face -face interaction, but it will help you guys out nonetheless. Now, one thing I want to say, when it comes to clinical experience, you guys should always make sure that you understand when you have stopped learning from a clinical experience. And the reason why I'm saying that is because as an undergrad, as a pre-med who's gone through that, I can personally tell you that you don't want to stay at a clinical site at a clinical experience where you have stopped learning something new every time you go or as much as you can like you've stagnated on your learning curve then the reason why i'm saying that is because medicine is a field where you have to continuously learn 
So why not learn early on and continuously learn in undergrad as a pre-med? My personal experience, I did a program where, you know, I paid I think $200 at the time to do a set of trainings and then to take up, you know, fake tests. It wasn't too hard. So I got a lot of experience at this program. I was able to work with CNAs, with NPs, with PAs, with, with nurses and technicians and farm techs and so many other allied health professionals. And I got to know the field of medicine very well. I also got to rotate through different departments in the hospital and kind of get a better feel of the hospital as a whole. And I really liked that. But I started to realize after a while, about after I think like four or five months, I started to realize that I wasn't learning anything. Like I got to know the system, I understood how important these people were for healthcare, but I wasn't really learning much. My clinical experience wasn't making me feel like I was learning every time. I wasn't, you know, growing as an applicant. And that's when I decided to look and pursue other clinical experiences. That's really, really important for you guys to stay cognizant of. You want to make sure you improve. You want to make sure you grow as an applicant and you want to make sure you are going to places you are using your time efficiently so that you continuously gain new experience, new meaningful experience, and you don't stagnate. Because the second you stagnate, in my opinion, it's kind of a waste of your time. You've already learned everything you can, now you're just doing the work. Go out there, get a new experience, and go learn some more. Now with that being said, I hope this helps you guys understand how to get meaningful clinical experience, okay? Also, if you guys haven't seen what types of clinical experiences you guys should get from medical school, hit the video over here where we talk about it. We did it a few while back, uh, a little while back. So hit this video right here so you guys can get a better understanding of the types of clinical experiences. That's why I didn't go into it, we've already covered it. Um, and I hope this made sense. I hope this helped you guys. If it did, let me know below. And if you guys like our channel, hit that subscribe button with the little bell, okay? So you guys can get notified every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that we posted a new video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you guys for all your support. I really appreciate it. All right guys, so I'll see you real soon. Take it easy fam. Peace.